Hello, my beautiful Gemini friends, and welcome to your horoscope, your final horoscope, oh my goodness, for 2022, where this month, Gemini, we are jumping back into the signature that we started 2022 with as we come back to Capricorn season, really looking at the progress that has been made, not just for you personally, but also in this eighth house, joint resources, um, vulnerability, detox and shedding, healing, astrology, a sense of independence that also comes with the intimacy of the eighth house. And we're also going to enter into this time realizing that we're carrying it into January of 2023 with the signature of the beginning of 2022 and hopefully some progress and then a chance to review it so we can really work with it as we travel through 2023. Now there are no eclipses. <laughs> There's no eclipses this month, so we're kind of getting some regular schmegular degular transits, which is really, I think, a nice way to be ending the year. And especially as we come into Capricorn season, we really do have to get a little bit more reserved and organized and kind of steadfast in what we're doing. So it's a nice enough energy, I think, to move us forward, right? Now we've also got a full moon happening in your sign, so what a great time to be ending the year. Um, shedding, saying this is what I'm done with. Here's where I'm ready to finalize some things and get ready for what's next for me. So I do think that December has a lot to offer. It will manifest differently for each of you, of course, depending on where you're at in your current lesson structure and wherever you are, it's perfect. All right, Gemini, let's jump in and see what's going on this month. So right at the beginning of the month, we've got Neptune coming out of retrograde in the energy of Pisces at 22 degrees. So make sure you are checking that on your chart, okay? 22 degrees of Pisces, fellow mutable energy, just like you. So there is some understanding of how this energy works. And it's been rolling through your 10th house space. Now, as Neptune went retrograde in June, when Neptune is retrograde, okay, when Neptune's direct, we keep a vision. We form an ideal. It's the vision, but it's not tangible, right? It's just this ideal that we, we, we want for ourselves. We'd like to grow towards it. We want to investigate the mystery of it. And we have to create in the intangible before we can make it tangible. But as Neptune went retrograde, it was like, hold on full on reality. Everything's concrete. There's no real break. There's no, you can't just kind of tap out into the vision. It feels harder to sometimes create a concrete vision for yourself because it's like, well, I mean, I don't have the same childlike faith that it's all going to work out or that this is going in the direction that I want, you know, without being able to just kind of create in the intangible. So instead, during a Neptune retrograde, where I think it's very useful is that the, the curtains are lifted, the blinds are lifted, the veil is lifted, whatever you want to call it, those rose colored glasses come off and you're like, that vision for my life doesn't work. Uh, it, it's an old vision, right? That's, that is, that is not what I want anymore. Instead, what I, what I do want, the ideal that I have, the vision and the dream that I have for my life in concrete form is this. So as Neptune is direct, now you can create around a more current aligned vision of what you want for yourself. Neptune direct, I think is also a time that whatever has been, you shed some things. Right, because Neptune and Pisces energy are also helpful for dissolving things. So what dissolved for you around your 10th house? Career, soul level calling, your reputation and your title that we call you in public. You know, are you mom, are you dad, are you grandma, are you grandpa, are you employed, you're retired? What's your title that we call in public? You know, was there actually a company or a business or a business idea that you released because you're like, that's not for me anymore and now I'm going to build forward with what I have. What are you finalizing in that area? All of these things you'll see continue to play out as Neptune moves its its energy forward. And Neptune is also <clears throat> an outer planet. So it's like the universe and your society also make space for you to play out the new vision, okay? As we get to the sixth, we see Mercury entering into the energy of Capricorn. So we're starting to light up that signature that we saw at the beginning of 2022 in this eighth house, joint resources, sex, intimacy, healing, 
deep passion, resources, your partner's resources. Um, astrology absolutely falls in the eighth house counseling, right? All of these things that we do at a vulnerable depth, you've really been working on, one of which is detaching and detoxing from things that are sucking the life out of you and not actually being a resource that you are connected with, right? If you had a relationship and there was no growth, you outgrew each other or it just wasn't working, this might have been in the detox box. If there was something in your family situation that is like, no, that needs to go in the detox box as well because I need to have a little bit more connection to my own independence. All of these things are part and parcel of the theme that we've been working on. Now, when we get to the 12th, of December, what we're going to see is Mercury entering into the pre-retrograde shadow time, getting ready for its retrograde. So I want you to start watching your chart at 8 degrees of Capricorn all the way to 24 degrees of Capricorn. These are the degrees of review for the Mercury retrograde through this 8th house. Now before we get busy really kicking the 8th house fully into gear, we're going to have a full moon on the 7th in your sign at 16 degrees. The full moon Gemini asks us to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment, and it's to you, right? Mars is also retrograde in your sign, so it is to you. Gemini, what are you needing to Mars? Take action on to finalize, to bring to an end. Finally put it to bed, let it go, let it move on. It can't travel forward in your vibration anymore. Or what do you need to adjust so that it is moving forward on stream? For you, are you changing your look? Are you changing the way your physical or your external environments are shaped and formed and decorated so that they really feel like Gemini and they're helping you succeed with where you need to go next? Whatever it is, we've got this really nice Mars retrograde energy in your sign to help you redo, redesire what you want for yourself going forward. As we get to the ninth, Venus is going to move into the energy of Capricorn, okay? So now we're attracting into this eighth house. So, you know, you're like, I value things that allow me to achieve. I value my healing. I value my therapy work. I value my collaborations. I value my body, my sex, my intimate connection with the universe with other people with myself with my independence right this is a great time where if you needed to apply for a loan or some kind of resource you're doing taxes death debt whatever you're working on birth right this is an attracting in energy but it's got long-term success or long-term project attached to it because it's capricorn work and it's an earth sign so it's very much so in the material plane what you're calling in on the 20th, we see Jupiter back into the energy of Aries. So this is this is a really interesting placement for you because it lights up this 11th house space, right? We saw Jupiter come here in May of 2022. So it started to expand the friendship group, the social group, the causes, your long range goals and visions and designs for yourself. And so you've got some flavor to like start working with it. Then Jupiter went into retrograde and you had to go back and finish doing this work throughout this Piscean space. And now as it's coming back into Aries, it's like, let's go. You learned, now expand this network out. What is this cause that you want to be about? What do you feeling confident, you know the direction that you want to travel in, you know the places and the friends and the connections and the collaborations you would like to travel with, you know your social media plan, you know whatever that looks like. And even you've got so much eighth house work going, did you like go do like a social media or even a friendship, a phone contact detox? What did that look like for you? But it's in much better shape. I want you to also keep in mind, Jupiter is going to run through Aries. It is going to move very, very quickly. So whatever you're expanding out, if it's tech, if you're learning something in that direction, really go confidently in that direction before we get to next May and see Jupiter moving into the energy of Taurus. And then we've got a whole different ball game to work with, okay? <laughs> now, as we get to the 21st, happy solstice, whichever one you are celebrating. For some it's winter, for some it is um, summer. So whichever one you're celebrating, change of season is upon us. Lighting up the eighth house arena of Capricorn, okay? The sun's bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. We have also got Pluto here. We've got Venus here. We've got Mercury here. We've got a lot going on and concentrated into this eighth house. And then when we get to the 23rd, we're going to welcome in a new moon at one degree of Capricorn. Very beginning. So truly, 
Plant your seeds of intention, Gemini, for getting organized, for looking at where you need more self-discipline in this eighth house. Where can you teach? Where can you share during this lunation about being self-disciplined that actually helps and benefits somebody else? But really, get yourself set up during this Capricorn season for what you need to do that is going to create long-term success it's going to create long-term commitment that is beneficial to you and to another resource right long-term commitment to your healing your independence your vulnerability your connection with who you are that is that root chakra fire that lights you up at this point in your life it is not about what used to light you up where are you at come current with your life during capricorn season and allow yourself to get organized and have the help of the ultimate timekeeper uh, to help you get that done now as we're going to close out this month gemini the ruling planet mercury is going to officially step into its retrograde at 24 degrees of capricorn so now you're first of all remember it's the ruling planet so some of that vitality may come down a little notch plus you got mars retrograde in your sign so it is just not you're not whipping and zipping okay the whip and zip is for march <laughs> 2023 but you are in more of a reflective review time in what you're doing what you're thinking how you're creating strategy for yourself moving forward and what are the dynamics of interconnection and vulnerability where are your pain points gemini and you need to go there and learn how to grow from that where are you helping someone else with their pain points to grow and create long-term success as well Lots to offer. Pay attention. Get your eyeballs in this eighth house so you can see how to really help yourself and participate with these energies. Again, cosmic results may vary. It's going to depend on where you're at in your lessons, how these things are going to manifest. But whatever's going on for you, Gemini, please let me know in the comment section down below. I want to know how you're doing. I want to know how you're experiencing this. Where is it happening in your chart? I see every single comment and I'm always sending love and support so connect with me down below all right my beautiful friends check out your 2023 horoscopes if you haven't done so already like this video comment share subscribe i love you and i'll see you next time bye gemini